Now, from the cosmologist's point of view, many would take the same data and not come to your conclusion. They would say that there is some inherent thing in the universe, some laws that caused uh, that there's either an unending series of, of causes or that that first singularity kind of uh, was um, uh, rolled into existence by itself in some way, or some cosmic foam emerged, and it, each singularity is the product of this cosmic foam uh, coming into existence, and suddenly one of them in an asymmetry uh, explodes into a Big Bang, and this has been going on forever and ever. So each Big Bang that we see may look like it has a singularity, but in fact this has been going on forever and ever. We don't need any God. Well, certainly those attempts have been made. But in one sense, the history of 20th century cosmology has been the history of one failed attempt after another to avert the absolute beginning predicted in the standard Big Bang model. We've seen the steady state model. We've seen oscillating models of the universe. We've seen vacuum fluctuation models, uh, chaotic inflationary models, quantum gravity models, most recently uh, the so-called ekpyrotic cyclical models of the universe, all of these attempting to avoid the absolute beginning predicted in the standard model. And one after another, these theories have either been falsified by the data or shown to be mathematically inconsistent, or else they have been shown to imply the very beginning of the universe that they sought to avoid. So I think that the prevailing view among contemporary cosmologists is that the universe cannot be eternal in the past, but that there is a past space-time boundary that represents the absolute beginning of the cosmos. I, I think that some of those arguments would say, though, that that you you can't determine that, that this recent experience of a Big Bang is, is uh, uh, once you go beyond that, either a, a membrane, uh, different dimensions, or some of these different theories could have oscillations before the Big Bang that, that we'd never have access to. And maybe that's non-falsifiable, but I, I don't think those are eliminated. Well, you're alluding, I think, there to Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok's so-called brain cosmology, which is an attempt to exploit string theory to develop uh, an eternally oscillating universe in higher dimensions. And they tried to extend this infinitely into the past. But what was discovered in 2003, in the fall of that year, by uh, three cosmologists, Alexander Vilenkin, Arvind Bord, and Alan Guth, the father of inflationary cosmology, uh, through their theorem, they were able to demonstrate that even these models cannot be extended infinitely into the past but that there has to be a past boundary uh, at some point that represents the beginning of the universe. So even these brain cosmologies and higher dimensional cosmologies, which are really very metaphysical in character, have been shown to be non-infinitely extendable into the past. That is to say that they must have a past boundary. So while the case is by no means open and shut, I mean, so the very nature of science is that its results are always provisional. They're always tentative. I think we can say with great confidence that the person who believes in the creation of the universe out of nothing stands solidly within mainstream science today. Minimally, we can say that. And that's quite different from the previous uh, 2,000 years of, of speculation about the origin of the, the universe.